hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. If you were to cross a white rose, so this here is your white rose, and it's homozygous white, which means both its allele are white. If you cross that with a red rose, again, homozygous red, so both its alleles are red, what do you actually get? You would expect, again, either to be, to be red, the offspring to be red, or to be white, whichever one is dominant. But in this case, what you actually get is you get them all to be pink. And the reason why they're pink is because neither red or white are recessive. They're both dominant. And because they're both dominant, we have something called codominance. And the idea of codominance is that the actual color will not be the color of the offspring, of the parents, of the P generation, but it will be a blending of the two. Which is why pink is, so we've got whites here, and we've got red here, and the middle between red and pink, uh, red and white, is your pink. So your pink is in between the two. And that means it's blended, so it's the blending of red and white, and that happens in codominance. I read the extra dot point, it says explain the relationship. So explain the relationship between homozygous and heterozygous genotypes and the resulting phenotypes in examples of codominance. So this is one example of codominance. We won't go over this example much in this video. But the idea in this case it says the relationship between homozygous. So if they're homozygous, it means if they have, if they're either all red or all white, then the actual phenotype will be red or white. But if they're heterozygous, if they have a combination of the two, then they will have that blending of the color. That's what the basic answer is for that dot point. I'll go over an, an, more of an interesting example, and that has to do with blood types. Now, humans have four different possible blood types. There is the group A, B, AB, and O. And it's actually important to know because if you're the group O, what that means is that you cannot take no one's blood. If you take anyone's blood, you will more or less die from it or get severely ill from it but you can give the blood to everyone. So if you're an O, that means you can give it to everyone. Whereas if you are AB, that means you can take it from everyone, but you can't give it to anyone but AB. Right? So these blood groups, there are, there's some importance to it because we're gonna make sure we cross your, like if you want to, to donate blood, if you're group O, we can give that blood to anyone. Whereas if you're group AB, we can't give that blood to anyone except for AB. That's why that's important. And when it comes to well, the reason why I'm talking about blood types is because it is a good example of codominance. And again, we have only we actually only have three different types of alleles: the A allele, B allele, and the O allele. That's all we have. Now, in my family, so this is my example here. We've got in my family. This is what we have. We have two of my siblings have A B blood. One sibling has B blood, and I am the unlucky one. And I'm the giver because I have O blood. So. The O can only give, they cannot, they cannot take from anyone but O, but they can give it to anyone else. So in this case, we have an interesting fact here because we have AB blood. And AB blood, there's no AB allele, but we have AB blood. So I'll show you why this is an example of codominance, but AB blood is not an allele, but just an example of codominance. So we have, in this case, my, my, this would have been my mom. My mom happened to have one allele which was A and one allele which was O. My dad happened to have one allele which was B and one allele which was O. This is my dad here. And then we would have had that normal crossing. It obviously happened four times because I have three siblings and myself. But if this A came together with this B, it would have been A, B. If this B from my, father, my dad came together with this O, it would have been B for my dad and O from my mom. If it were this O from my dad and this A from my mom, it would have been A O. And if it were this O from my mom and this O from my dad, it would have been O O. O. And for me, it was O O because this was my genotype. And the way I know that is because O is recessive. We've established that O is recessive, and the way we know that is because of this. B 
B. One of my siblings, I think my sister, has B blood. And there's no A, B, there's no B, O, it's just B. The reason why she's just B is because that O is hidden. Because the O is recessive. So even though she has a O allele, the O allele is recessive. Now the interesting part, and the thing we want to talk about, is this A, B blood. So in the examples of A and O, so this relationship between A and O, and between B and O, is both a dominant and, co and recessive relationship. One is dominant, and the other is recessive. In this case, both the A is dominant over the O, which is recessive, and the same for a, B. B is dominant over O. But when A and B come together, so when A and B come together, that doesn't happen because there is actually a co-dominant. These are co-dominant. They're both dominant. There's a co-dominant relationship. And that means that the phenotype, so how it appears, both of them appear because there's a blending, A, B together. Because yeah, that's what happens. If it's co-dominance, there's a blending, which means they both appear in some form. Whereas if there's a dominant and recessive relationship, such so as A and O and B O, only one appears. In this case, only B appears. In the other case, only A appears in the phenotype. So phenotype here is A. Phenotype here is B because it was that dominant and recessive relationship. And the phenotype here is the phenotype is A B. So the actual dot point says. Explain the relationship between homozygous and heterozygous genotypes and the resulting phenotypes, an example of codominance. So when it comes to, for example, the again back to the flowers, we said that if it's just white white, right? This here it is homozygous white, so its phenotype will be white. This here is homozygous red, so its phenotype will be red. But if we combine these two, we have a heterozygous one, which means one from each. And now we don't have red or white. We have the blend, which is pink. If it were with the black groups, if you have, you can also have AA. You can have that as well. AA, then the actual phenotype will be A. If it were BB, then the phenotype will be B. In O, the phenotype will be O. And then again, the crunch point, if it's A, B, the phenotype will be A, B. That's your, that's your hetero one, your heterozygous one. And the reason why is because there's a co-dominant relationship. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.